And moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? Again, on October 19th, 2019. And who were these messages being exchanged between? These are between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. What in relation to these messages stood out to you in relation to the investigation? Primarily the timing of the messages uh, in conjunction with Tammy Daybell's death and then this is the first in a series of uh, messages over the next 24 hours or so between uh, Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow subsequent to uh, Tammy Daybell's death. And again, Tammy Daybell was pronounced dead on October 19th of 2019? Yes, the uh, call, the 911 call uh, was approximately 6 a.m on October 19th, 2019. So the same day these messages are exchanged? Correct. And move to the next slide and pause to allow the jurors to read. <clears throat> Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? These messages are on October 20th, 2019. And who were these messages between? Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. And this is the day after Tammy's been pronounced dead? Well, the first two messages, as you can see, are, are just past midnight. So they're approximately 18 hours after Tammy Daybell's death. And then the last two messages are approximately 25 and a half hours uh, after that 911 call regarding Tammy Daybell's death. What else about these messages stood out to you in relation to the investigation? Well, line 527 uh, on that date is a text from Chad to Lori Vallow. Um, where he indicates, I love talking with you, it's baby night, uh, so come get me later. Do you know where Lori Vallow would have been at that time? She's in Hawaii. In the messages that you reviewed shortly after Tammy's death, any expression of grief by Chad Daybell regarding his wife's death? None. Any expression of grief by Lori Vallow? None. And if you recall, when you testified previously, you'd reviewed messages around the time of Charles' death. Is that correct? Yes. Any expression of grief by Lori in those? None. Any expression of grief by Chad in those? No. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read.
And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? October 20th of 2019 in the early morning hours. And who are they being exchanged between? Again, it's a continuation between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Were there things about these particular messages that stood out to you in relation to the investigation? We're now getting into the logistics of Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow uh, being together subsequent to Tammy Daybell's death. Lori Vallow actually invites Chad to jump on a plane and come to Kauai. Uh, and Chad Daybell responds that she should come back to the mainland so that they can spend the night together on Thursday and then indicates wanting to look for a condo um, so that they could return to Kauai at the first of the month, meaning November. And do you recall from your previous testimony reviewing some messages regarding a plan to be in Kauai? I do. And who was that plan between? Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. Do you know if Chad and Lori were ultimately married? They were. Where did they get married? On the island of Kauai. Do you know where Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow moved to? The island of Kauai. And this conversation took place about 25 hours after Tammy Daybell had been pronounced dead? About 26 hours after the 911 call by Chad Daybell uh, to indicate to authorities that his wife was dead. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, would you indicate the date that these messages were exchanged? October 20th of 2019. And are these a continuation from some of the previous slides we've reviewed? Yes, they are. And who were these messages between? Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. In relation to your investigation, what stood out to you with these messages? Again, it's a continuation of uh, the fulfillment of their plans to be together. The first line, 5118, Chad Daybell indicates uh, a workout plan for Lily, who is Lori Vallow, uh, that he wants to tighten his abs, get a full body tan, grow his hair out, and that it could be really good for both him and Lori Vallow. And in that last one, 516, do you know who Raphael and Lily is referring to? Those are, again, alternate names for Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. And is there an indication there about how much they will be together? A hundred percent. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read.
Agent Hart, can you please indicate the date these messages were exchanged? Yes, this is the conclusion of this text string and the date is October 20th, 2019. And who are the messages between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Was there anything that stood out to you in relation to the investigation in these messages? Yes. In line 515, you have Lori Vallow indicating how consuming her love is for Chad Daybell. And then of note, line 514, Chad Daybell responds, I know exactly how you feel. I'm feeling sad, but it isn't for the reason everyone thinks, exclamation point. Through the investigation, did you learn what the connection between Alex Cox and Chad Daybell was? Yes. What was that? Alex Cox was an adherent of Chad Daybell. Judge, Abel. objection, argumentative. Sustain. Did Chad beat Alex through Lori? Yes. Based on your investigation, review of messages, and other themes, would Alex do as Chad asked? Judge, objection, argumentative. Overruled. Yes. Did Tammy Daybell know Alex Cox based on what you learned in the investigation? No, she did not. Was the only connection between Tammy and Alex Chad? Correct. Moving to the next slide, I'm going to pause to allow the jurors to read. And Agent Hart, can you indicate the date these messages were exchanged? Yes, October 23rd of 2019. And who were the messages being exchanged between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. And do you recall in a previous slide talking about a message where Alex was going to be told information also? Yes. What about these messages stood out to you in relation to the investigation? In relation to the investigation, primarily lines 482 and 481 stood out to me. In line 482, Lori Vallow indicates she's had a bad dream about Al. And primarily line 481, Lori indicates that Alex Cox would be the one they use to get us both. All this alone time is not good for him. So something that Alex Cox knows is a risk to Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Based on your investigation, review of the iCloud, and other information, who was the they being referred to? Objection, speculation. Overruled. I believe that is a direct reference to law enforcement. What is Chad's response in line 479? Chad Daybell indicates I will try to reach out to him later today. So Chad was going to be the one to reach out to Al. Correct. And Lori was requesting Chad's help with talking to Al. Correct.
And again, through your review of the messages, who was seeking information? Primarily Lori Vallow. And who was providing the answers? Primarily Chad Daybell. I have no further questions. All right, thank you, Ms. Blake. All right, Mr. Pryor, cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. Agent Hart, there was a, um, a discussion about uh, when you're investigating uh, missing children, who the um, potential um, um, folks that you would uh, look to if you were uh, starting your investigation. Do you recall that discussion? Yes. And wouldn't it be fair to say that an obvious person to look for or look at when you're investigating missing children would be a new husband. In addition to others, yes. Uh, we, we would look at the parent or the husband. I guess my point was you can't put blinders on. You can't exclusively hone in on one person at the onset of an investigation. Right, and it would be inappropriate to do that. I mean, when you're looking and in, in conducting an investigation, wouldn't it be fair to say that any and all evidence that you obtain, you should look at all leads of, of, of evidence and not target your investigation in one channel? Would that be fair? Yes, that's what we did. Okay. And that's what you're, as far as the FBI, that's what you did, right? I participated in dozens of meetings with the Rexburg Police Department and the Fremont County Sheriff's Office. It's my belief that's what all of us did. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, it's your contention that you didn't um, fail to investigate or look into uh, um, evidence that might lead you in a different direction. Would that be fair? That's correct. Okay. Now, as part of your FBI training, you talked about that you were involved in the uh, task of, of looking for identifying missing children, correct? Yes. And as part of that FBI training, is it your experience or the FBI's experience that they ever utilize the uh, use of uh, a medium to uh, to try to locate or talk to, to children who have passed on? It's extremely common for people who claim to have those abilities to come forward, but no, the FBI does not employ mediums in in its investigations. And I didn't say employ, I said utilize, but do you know the name Allison Dubois? I believe I am familiar with that name, yes. And, and Mr. Bois is a medium who claims to have the ability to uh, talk to children and to... Objection, Your Honor. Counsel's testifying. Move to strike. Stain. What is your knowledge of Alison Dubois? It's my belief that she holds herself out to be a spiritual medium. And that spiritual medium is, is, is being able to talk to children who have passed on? I couldn't say specifically what abilities she claims to have. Okay, and has, I don't want to say employ, but has the FBI or any agency you've been involved in ever employed Allison Dubois or any other medium in helping gain information? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. Gain information about uh, the whereabouts or the circumstances surrounding the death of a uh, children or, or anyone in particular. Well, Mr. Pryor, when you say, when I said employ, I think I mean the same thing you do as utilize, okay. not, not pay money to. Um, I am 
not I've never spoken with Alison Dubois. I've never requested her services. To my knowledge, nobody in this investigation requested her services. Many times these people come forward offering their services and offering what they claim to have seen. So you are familiar that there are people out there um, who as a professional occupation claim to be able to, uh, to engage in these spiritual uh, exercises, for lack of a better word, correct? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Sustained. Okay. So would it be fair to say that if Chad Daybell placed himself out as someone who uh, claims to be able to, to have these spiritual gifts, that in itself is not unusual. Would you agree with that? I don't believe it's common. Uh... Okay. Uh, your concern is that the, the number of text messages in reference to Tammy and the children, that's where you, you, you say that's where we potentially have a problem, correct? Given what happened to Tammy and Tylee and JJ, yes. Okay. Okay. Now I noticed um, during your um, dissertation with all of your exhibits, uh, on around 8-11, August 11th of 2019, it appears that there are some, some, some captions that were, were left out regarding a breakup between Lori and Chad Daybell. Do you recall that? I believe those were included in the first uh, testimony that I provided a number of weeks ago. Okay, and, the, and those were not included in today's testimony, is that right? They were not part of today's testimony. Do you have a specific recollection of what was involved in, in, in the the the, uh, the the language that was used that you could read and provide us in terms of uh, testimony regarding those uh, those emails I, I yes I can certainly give you my best recollection it won't be verbatim and and if we, you want verbatim we'd have to go back to the exhibit that was used uh, during my testimony previously and judge, previously, uh, the state and the defense stipulated to the admission of the uh, Lori for style um, uh, uh, contents of that particular account. I'm holding in my possession Exhibit 7U. I'm going to ask that the uh, court mark this as an exhibit and move for admission by, I don't know that the state has an objection to that. The state does not have an objection. I just wanted to clarify which ones. Very well. We'll get that marked for you, Mr. Pryor. And then Thank you, Judge. Can you clarify what's in 7U? Judge, it's a content of approximately four uh, text messages um, between Lori Vallow and Chad, Chad Daybell dating from 8-11 of 2019. All right. Exhibit 7U is being marked and will be admitted. Thank you. Judge, may I have the court's permission to publish? Yes. And it might take me a minute, Judge. more than a minute.
And Judge, if we could start publishing. All right, we will. No, office, uh, officer, I apologize. Agent, um, line 856 uh, talks about the, from Chad Dable to Lori Vallow, the next two days will be tortured. Do you see that? I do. Then uh, there's a comment from Chad, makes a comment, and could you read that thankfully? Uh, thankfully, I will be alone most of Wednesday and beyond. Okay, and then we go to line 854. Are, are these in, these are, there's no, um, text messages that are in between each of these. Is that correct? So in the um, iCloud, th there can be. So in between 856 and 854, Lori Vallow could have gotten a text from a friend about lunch. And so they're just arranged and given a line number based on the date and time. So that's how this works. Okay. So the time on the first one, 8.56, is at 9.56. The, the 8.54 would be the next correspondence from Lori Vallow to Chad, correct? Yes. And if you could read that entire uh, text message, starting with the word is. Is that what he wants, for me to sit around waiting for you endlessly and you miserably wasting time? It just doesn't feel right, exclamation point. Okay. Now, you talked about um, the manipulation that was engaged in, in, in these, uh, many of these, and you say, use the word many from Lori Vallow to Chad Daybell. Is this an example in your mind of Lori Vallow again manipulating Chad Daybell? Absolutely. It was a two way street. Lori Vallow would manipulate Chad Daybell and vice versa. Okay. And Chad's manipulation would be talking about the religious knowledge that he claims to have in this. Vast wisdom, is that right? Yes. Okay. So on two levels, we have manipulation, at least according to you. Uh, we would have manipulation because someone's claiming to have some religious knowledge and, and espouses that by trying to impress Lori Vallow with that vast religious knowledge, correct? I think it's more than knowledge. I think it's direction. Okay. And then in Lori's case, this is manipulation and in trying to get Chad to do what she wants him to do, correct? Yes, I would agree. Okay. Okay. And Judge, could we unpublish at this point to like move to the next slide? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, and then if we could publish again. Go ahead. And then again on 811, it talks about uh, Chad to Lori Vallow. I'm frustrated. I'm sorry, honey. And then let's go to line 843, which appears to have occurred at about the same time the first text. And if you could, um, if you could read line 843, starting with you. You can't just keep tearing my heart out. I really can't take it anymore. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. And then let's go down to line 841 and start with reading that one for me. What about the past two days? I didn't even get to talk to you on your birthday. I'm clearly not a priority. I just don't want to be so sad all the time and do heart broken. And again, in your professional experience with dealing with this case, is that another instance where Lori Vallow may be trying to manipulate Chad Daybell? Certainly. Okay, thank you. And Judge, if we could unpublish again. Yes. And let's uh, publish again, Judge. And then if you would read line 840. If you really loved me, you wouldn't want that either. Okay. And then uh, Chad Daybell responds. That was from Lori Vallow to Chad, correct? Yes. And then two minutes later, Chad 
uh, discusses that he couldn't have talked. The girls were there, and then he and he expresses his true love for Lori Vallow. Correct? Yes. And then, if you would do, be so kind, uh, two two minutes later at ten fifteen, Lori Vallow texts Chad Daybell, uh, and if you could just read the entire uh, um, line, starting with you. You should give all of you love and your attention to your wife and family. I'm just a distraction. Go have fun with your family. I really do want you to. I just can't be in the way anymore. If things change, then we can talk. But we have nothing until things change anyway. And once again, I don't want to keep uh, reiterating this, but this is another example of Lori Vallow uh, attempting to manipulate Chad Daybell. Would you agree? I would. Okay. And it seems a little bit final. And it seems as if that the suggestion here is on 8 11 of 2019 that there's a breakup between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. Do you agree with that? I do. Okay. Judge, we can unpublish this. All right. All right, that concludes cross. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Your Honor, I would request permission to publish from 183B the printout of the PowerPoint. I can use the drive if necessary. All right, we'll get you the exhibit on the drive. Agent Hart, you were asked about manipulation by Lori Vallow from counsel. Do you recall that? I do. Through your investigation, did you also find manipulation by Chad Daybell? I did. Did you find that manipulation around the same time of the breakup? I found it throughout the entire course of the investigation. And again, through the investigation and based on your review, who would determine someone was dark? Chad Daybell. Who would determine if someone was a zombie? Chad Daybell. Who would determine... Judge, I'm going to object at this point. It's going beyond the scope of cross-examination. Overall. Who would determine death percentages? Chad Daybell. And Your Honor, I would request permission to just publish one page of the slide, but the printed out uh, for ease. Yes, you may publish the printed version on the Elmo if you'll identify what it is when you do that. Yes, it is slide 18 from the printed version of Exhibit 183B. Agent Hart, who is the one that indicates 
There is a plan being orchestrated. Chad Daybell. And do you see the reference in there to the children? I do. Do you know where Tammy Daybell's body was located when she was pronounced dead? Tammy Daybell's body was located in the bedroom in their home. Where were the bodies of Tylee and JJ located? Tylee and JJ were both located on the pasture property of the residence. And was that the residence of who again? Chad Daybell. I have no further questions. All right, thank you. That will conclude the testimony then of Agent Hart. Does the state have any additional witnesses to call in its case in chief? We do not, Your Honor. All right, so has the state rested at this time? Judge, if we may have a brief sidebar. Yes.